All right, in today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to reduce your cost per lead inside Google Ads. Now, this is meant for service based businesses. This isn't meant for e commerce, uh, specifically. In service-based businesses, we're focusing on the skilled trades. That's just what our company focuses on here at Tradesman Digital Marketing. So keep that in mind when I'm going through this list, even though most of these could still be applied to the vast majority of Google Ads accounts. Now to start it off, good ad copy is a must for a Google Ads account. If you don't have it, chances are your account is going to do very poorly. This is because low click-through rates lead to low quality scores. And a low quality score leads to a higher cost per click, which means you're going to need more clicks to get one lead, meaning your lead costs are going to skyrocket. So good ad copy. Make sure you're always A-B testing your ads. Make sure you're rewriting them from the perspective of the consumer. And make sure they really speak to the customer's problem. Don't boast about yourself and how great you are. If you do this, chances are your ads are going to be terrible, you're going to have a low click-through rate, and your account isn't going to be very good. So make sure you strive for as high of a click-through rate as possible with your ad. That way you generate a high quality score, and that in turn lowers your cost per click, which leads to more leads, which leads to more success inside your campaign. The next thing is improving your message match, and I've spoken about this before in its own dedicated video but you really want to make sure the message between the keyword the ad and the landing page are all consistent if they're not you're going to create a confusing situation for your prospective uh, client slash lead uh, and if you imagine typing in a keyword like hvac repair and then you click on the ad and the ad says uh, hvac companies near me and then you go to the landing page and it says uh, cooling uh, ac cooling repair it's not the same thing that you typed in. Could it be applicable to you? Probably, but it confuses the consumer. And now I know this is like a really extreme example of it, but a lot of companies, they'll just target a whole bunch of keywords, write one simplistic ad for it, and send them to a very general website that doesn't uh, really solve their problem that they have at the current moment. And this is really an issue when it comes to creating a lot of cognitive dif dissonance in their mind, and they're more likely to leave, which lowers conversion rates. So that's very important. Make sure the message lines up between the keyword, between the ad, between the landing page. If you can do that, chances are you're gonna improve the conversion rate, you're gonna improve, improve your uh, click-through rate as well, which your entire account is gonna be more successful if you implement good message match. The next thing is use extensions. So generally I advocate as many relevant extensions as possible. This is because the more real estate you use, the bigger your ad is, and the more likely it is to be clicked on. It also allows for customers to just bypass your landing page and say they want to call you right away with a you know a call only extension. They can do that. And it's you know it's a fantastic resource for improving click-through rate and conversion rates. That being said, it's pretty self-explanatory. The more space you take up, the more likely to or to click on so use extensions uh, there's not much harm in using them provided they're relevant to your account and they're going to improve your click-through rate uh, the next thing is adding negatives and I kind of paired this one with the next one but adding negatives every single week making sure that you're getting rid of the keywords that have nothing to do with your account so if you're targeting phrase match or broad match and you're popping up for keywords like say you're targeting the keyword HVAC repair or HVAC uh, installation, and you're popping up for HVAC installation tips or HVAC installation repair tips or something like that, you got to get rid of those keywords. And I know it takes a long time to do to really build in an extensive list, but it must be done because those few clicks every single month are going to eat up your budget and they're going to cause lower conversion rates and wasted ad spend. So definitely get rid of that. Uh, if you can get rid of that and build out an extensive list so you're not wasting these ad spend, uh, that ad spend, you can significantly reduce your cost per lead. Another thing is, in conjunction with this, building out more ad groups. And what I mean by this is finding good keywords that you don't already have in your account. You go through to your search terms, you look at them and you go, okay, this is a potential keyword we can target. Build out an ad group around that. Make a dedicated ad for it. Uh, maybe even build a dedicated landing page for it. And um, really continue to expand your account. By doing this, Google has more options to target for keywords. And when it has more options, it can go for the lower cost per click keyword and you can get a lower cost per click, which means lower cost per lead, which means more success in your account and you're gonna be getting more leads. Uh, the next thing is optimize your landing page. And a lot of people just go straight to landing page when it comes to reducing cost per lead, but it's one of the factors that determines success inside of account and cost per lead. 
So optimizing your landing page is very important. You wanna make it simple, clear. You really wanna add as much social proof as possible and reasons why the customer should buy from you, but still keeping it clear and concise so they don't, uh, you don't overwhelm the customer. Because if you do that and you make the customer think, they're more likely to leave. Um, another thing is always A-B test your landing page. If you're not doing this on a regular basis, there's no way to figure out if your landing page is doing well or not, or if it could be doing better. So we recommend always A-B testing it. And it might even take a couple months to really figure out a winner, depending on how much traffic you're getting through. Do we you like you don't hope it takes a couple months, maybe like a few weeks to figure out a winner. But even if it does take a long time, really try to figure out a winner and then go from there and incrementally change each thing. And that's an important thing when I that I should mention with landing pages is don't change 400 different variables on the landing page. Change one thing at a time and go, OK, did this improve? Yes. Did this improve? No. OK, well, go back to here and then we'll you know try something else. Did that improve? Yeah. And then try something else. Maybe, you know. Always change one thing at a time and make sure uh, you can see the results in your actual test testing. Because if you don't, you really don't know what you're changing for good or for better. So uh, yeah, keep that in mind with landing pages. And if you can boost your conversion on, rate on landing pages, that can significantly reduce your cost per lead. So very important to do. The final thing is uh, using an automating bidding strategy. And this is important once you have enough data in the account. If you don't have enough data in the account, don't use an automated bidding strategy right away. Uh, Google can kind of uh, find the wrong types of leads and you really have to guide them the first month or two to find the leads you're looking for. So I would recommend getting enough data in the account month one, month two, getting you know 25 to 50 leads in and then changing it over to an automated bidding strategy so Google can optimize those like tiny little uh, changes in the account when it comes to bid adjustments and going after the correct keywords. And once once you're in this phase, Google can really optimize better than a human can and it can reduce your cost per lead significantly. So that's what I would recommend. Uh, all of these things, if you take them into consideration, you should be able to reduce your lead costs quite a bit. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them down in the description or comment section down below. I'd be happy to answer them. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day and take care.